Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Masters Interviews. Today, I'm really, really pleased to have someone on who probably doesn't do as many interviews as some of the people we've spoken to previously in this series. Uh, however, he's really, really, really well known in the hobby, mainly for the painting side of things and I'm really pleased I really wanted to get a really good painter on uh, this series so I'm sort of intrigued and delighted uh, to welcome somebody who is not only a painter but also an author having published uh, guides about how to paint miniatures and has been painting miniatures for an awfully long time for an awfully different number of people in different formats and is also credited by some people who we've spoken to in the series before with maybe even revolutionising or inspiring different ways of painting. It is Kevin Dallimore. Hello, evening, Kevin. Chris. Hello, Chris. I was a bit worried where you were going with that for a minute. but <laughs> <laughs> Down a rabbit hole you don't want to go down. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wasn't too sure, but good evening, yeah. Chris. Hi, how are you doing? Okay, thank you. So, Kevin, can you, I mean, there will be a lot of people who will see your name on this video or this interview and they'll go, oh, Kevin Dallimore, I'm going to listen to that. And there'll be some people who go, I'm not too sure who that is, but I recognise that name. Maybe if they're new to the hobby, for example. Could you just sort of explain, you know, where you are from? I know obviously we're from the, we're both from the United Kingdom because I know we've yeah. got people who listen in America and Australia and further afield. But yeah, where are you yeah, from in, the, in our fair uh, British Isles, Kevin? Well, south of London. And gradually, as we've got older, we've sort of moved further, further south. Uh, we've not quite escaped the M25 yet, but uh, that, that, I don't know if that's a plan eventually. But yeah, we're, we're not far from the M25. Cool. Um, I'm speaking to you from, from Nottinghamshire, Nottingham. Yes. Yeah, I kind of I gathered that, the centre of wargaming. Yeah. Uh, and... As I said, it's fair to say that, that Kevin is well known for, for painting. Uh, uh, who He has published Kevin Dallimore's Painting and Modelling Guide. Yeah. Uh, in 2000, was it? 2000, was it that long ago? It was, it oh was a while ago. I don't think it was, I don't it think was, it was 2000. No. It was 2000 something. I can't remember I what the year. I should have looked it up. I'll, I'll have to go and get a copy. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't got one to hand, to be honest. They're, they're, in, in, yeah. in another, they're in a room yeah. upstairs, but... Uh, I'd have to look it up. It might be that long ago. Um, yeah, I feel, yeah. I feel like it, I feel like it's two thousand something rather than a two thousand. Yeah, it's two thousand and something, but I can't exactly because I, it took me quite a long time to write it. Yeah, because I, I was at found working. It's a big book. It's a big book. Yeah. Uh, the second the second one is bigger. I mean, the second yeah. one weighs a kilo. I mean, don't drop it on your foot. <laughs> But the first one was the one that took me longer to do because I'd not done it before. And it was kind of a project that uh, Brian Ansell, who ran uh, War Games yeah. Foundry. Yeah, I have met Brian once. Just have you? Just, just the once, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very briefly. He probably wouldn't remember me, but I was, I was lucky enough. Uh, well, to be to fair, Brian's, once, yeah. Brian's met a lot of people, so he yeah. might not remember me, actually. <laughs> I've met his wife Diane a few times through work. Oh yeah, Diane. Yeah, yeah, Diane's very sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah, you see. Yeah, I tend to see her. Oh well, not this year, but we have. You see her at a show generally yeah, speaking. Yeah. Right? We'll get on to um, all these. All, who all these for people who don't know who these people are. Oh yeah, sorry. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah. We talk later. about them. Yeah, we just talk <laughs> about them as. Yeah. We'll um, explain no, these up, but, but Kevin, I mean, you, you, you're uh, so. Bear that in mind. You've yeah. So you obviously you've painted and you've worked for Foundry. I do. Yeah. Foundry, uh, and yeah. you now work for North Star Miniatures. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so we've already established that you you do all that. And if you don't know who Kevin is, have a quick Google now. Kevin Dallimore, painted miniatures. You're going to see something pretty special uh, when in the results in the Google results. Um, yeah, you, you. My website usually comes up. Yeah, Kevin's got a website which which I'll link to in the comments below this video, uh, where you can look at all of his amazing stuff. But where where did it start for you then, Kevin? When did you when did you first pick up a major and go? I'm going to put some paint on that. I mean, to be sh strictly honest, I guess it was probably little tiny airfix figures that me and my brother essentially sort of threw at each other when we were children. 
But I do remember going to a friend of a friend's and seeing that, so that some of them had paint on them. You know, they weren't just the plastic yeah. thing you got out of the box. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think, I can't remember what they'd done, but they painted some flesh on them or something. And it, then it occurred to me that, that I could do that. So that's probably the first things that my brother and I painted were, I think, probably Airfix Germans and Airfix British just blobbing yeah. bits of i dread to think i fortunately i have no pictures of those you don't so nothing. no nothing no even and, and i if even if i yeah. had I would, I do you would remember how old you would have been when you when you first did that well it might have been around 10 or 12 something like that yeah. yeah but that was that wasn't anything that you could say i'd actually sort of started painting properly the first stuff i remember doing properly are uh, we had a chess club at my school yeah, And although it was called a chess club, it wasn't really a chess club. It was a games club, really, because the maths teacher who we had uh, was, a, was, a, was a war gamer. Unbeknownst to me, I didn't know what a war gamer was at that point. Mm. And he introduced us to gaming, uh, board games initially, but then actual figure games. And then I realized there was like a whole world of actual, not airfix figures necessarily, but... And that was when I first started painting, I guess what you'd call some, not toy soldiers as such, you know, actual ones that were meant for war models, games. Models, yeah, yeah. Well, model, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at their, you know, by, by today's standards, they were, you know, pretty basic, but they were, you know, not state of the art. I suppose they probably were state of the art, but the art wasn't very high at that point. Sure. And yeah, then I, that I was probably fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, I mean, would you like would you remember like, who the manufacturer would have been? Yeah, they yeah, that, fit game. No, or? I still I still have them. I you still, you still got them. I still have them. Yeah, and oh, if, and if amazing. you hunt, if you hunt on my website, you can actually find some pictures of them. Although I don't advertise it right across the top of the website. No, but there is somewhere. there is a there is a little archive section that has one or two pictures of um, some quite quite shiny gloss painted. But neat, I hope. Yeah. I hope they were yeah, reasonably yeah. neat. And, and how yeah, my, you, sorry, how old say, you, I think so 14. Say so a that, teenager. That sort of, yeah. Yeah, 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 just, yeah. 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 And because um, my dad was quite keen as well, so we sort of did that together. And right. I still have some of the figures he painted as well, which is nice, because I don't have him anymore. So yeah. um, I still have some. And it was a Hinchcliffe Byzantine army. And yeah. I'm, looking down, I'm looking down there because I can still see the, I can see the toolbox down there that they're in. Which is amazing. It's actually well. It's propping up my wife's desk at the moment. But so that original army that you painted is you still own it, and it's still yeah. I do. Yeah. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. It, it doesn't see. It, to be fair, it doesn't see the light of day very often. <laughs> no, I can imagine. But it's brilliant to have them, though, isn't it? I guess. Yeah, I can't. I can't bet apart with them, really. I, you know. I no, think, never uh, do. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're not. They're not worth anything to anybody else. You know. But it's yeah, really of course. Just, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. nostalgia for me and. You know, yeah. memories of me and my dad painting Hun cavalry, you know, in the front room. God Absolutely, yeah. As I did, as a, when I very first picked up a miniature, very, very briefly, I had a really, really brief dalliance with Games Workshop when I was about 14, something like um, 25 years ago. Um, now, what were they doing then? Um, uh, Empire. Oh, yeah, enough. Empire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I, I sold the lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's after about, I paint, painted it all um, in space, but it was about nine months I did it for. I don't know why it was so brief. It was a fad with among friends, you know. Uh, painted them all. After I painted them all, sold them. <laughs> I regret it massively. And other people who have done we've done these interviews with, about half of them have still got some of the things that they first painted, and the other oh, yeah, half I've, have, I've, haven't. I've, you know, I've, I've gone back and bought back stuff as well. Stuff really. That I, yeah. The stuff that I did have at the time and thought, oh, like you say, you never need that again. But then I've got uh, uh, some old Citadel stuff and things like that that you think. Yeah. I remember. Do, I remember doing Dungeons and Dragons with that. And, yeah. Uh, but I mean, they were never really mine. My brother was the one who had the Dungeons and Dragons stuff. But there were yeah. just some miniatures that, oh, I don't know. I remember from a particular game we were doing or something. Yeah. And, I've not done anything with them, you know, I've just bought them. <laughs> yeah, I've just got them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just having them, yeah. It's just interesting that you mentioned your dad because a couple of people have done that as well. They've, they've mentioned that, that their, he their was, dad he wasn't played a, gamer. a role in it. He, he wasn't a gamer, not at all. He wasn't really interested, but he, 
for some reason he quite liked the painting. I don't know why. It just appealed to him as an artisan thing. I think. Mm. Uh, was, he was. Was he, he, was, he arty as such, or not particularly? No, yeah. he was a okay. he was a bus conductor for you know major part of his working life. But he did used to moonlight doing um, painting and decorating. So maybe that was it. And he he, always, he did teach me how to use a paintbrush. To be fair, so. Yeah, something in it, I guess, isn't there? So Yeah, yeah, I can remember him lecturing me not to fill the brush up with paint. You know, yeah. don't fill it right up. Just all get the way little, up. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Don't, 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 yeah, don't fill it all, yeah. yeah. That, that does ruin brushes. Yeah. So when did you, so where, did, where do you go from there then as a teenager? Presumably you keep practice and keep going and going and going and then does that go into adulthood fairly smoothly or do you have that sort of like late teenage I, pause that some people yeah, do? Yeah, there was, there was, there was a bit of a pause, yeah, while I, went off and went to college yeah and did various stuff yeah and found uh, women and motorcycles yeah um, yeah of which i you know i still have a number of uh, motorcycles not women <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have one woman, <laughs> one woman. <laughs> and and three three motorcycles but yeah excellent and, and then so did you, what sort so, of yeah so I did, yeah and where does Sorry? that go what, what what brought you back into painting and and, and playing and stuff? um where did that when did that start restart why I, got, why I got back into gaming but what what got me sort of further into it was going to a club which right. i'd never been to before i went to uh, a war games club which i, I kind of sort of knew existed but never really did anything about it and there was one at college uh, as there often was, you know. I mean, I didn't go to university or anything. I'm talking about Croydon Tech. I'm not talking about going to like, uh, you know, a proper university or anything. But but there happened to be a, a war games club at college, which I kind of went to a bit and never did anything much about it. And when I finished that, for some reason I can't remember why I went to. Uh, I wanted. I wanted, decided I wanted to go gaming again. And I found a club over in Eltham called uh, South East London War Games Group. And I've been a member of it ever, ever since, which is, gosh. I was say, I've, they're still going, aren't they? They're still a thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've, yeah, seen, yeah. I've, seen, uh, I've seen that name mentioned a number of times. I think in yeah. shows and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're still going, wow. yeah. yeah. And, and also I joined the South London Warlords as well. But that That's was the name I know, yeah. That was yeah. a bit later on. Yeah, they run Salute or yeah. they did run Salute, except in these present circumstances of course yeah I've, I've never been um to salute um but i'm definitely gonna go <laughs> when things restart yeah it's worth going it's definitely worth going. i'm not saying that just because i'm a warlord but um it's definitely worth going but be prepared that you won't you know it's hard to do it all in a day yeah it, it's it, it's unfortunately yeah. a two-day show that's run in one day yeah that's what a lot of people have told me who have been yeah it's brilliant yeah. but you, you know pick your fight fight your battles literally yeah that's <laughs> right yeah, yeah pick your battles yeah 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 good. i mean i know I, I know several people now who just can't, can't face going they just don't go it's just too much can't do it but I, I mean i don't go as a punter i go as a working club member yeah. So you're me, involved in it. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's just a busy day doing stuff, usually running a game. We r- often run games. At, uh, yeah. Uh, we run a part, usually run a participation game there. Various ones we've done over the years, mostly involving dialects. But. Oh, good. So when do you, when does this become a, a, a thing for you then? When, when a job. Do, yeah. Mm. When does that, when does that start to happen? Oh, I'm trying to think. I did. Long, long, long time ago, or yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, mid nineties, I guess. I was going to say, it strikes me as it must have been a while ago that you've been. Yeah, because I, I mean, my proper job I had to start with was, uh, was in a drawing office, and I worked for the navy uh, when they used to have navy drawing offices and things like that. Don't have that sort of thing. Right. Uh, so we used to do, we used to build buildings for the navy, and I did that, I guess, for ten years or so. And then for some reason or other, my friend and I decided it would be a good idea to, because he was a painter as well. Uh, I met, met him at the club and we were both, both painters and both quite keen. And we decided that it'd be a great idea to, to set up as a painting company, the pair of us. And so we did. As a, as a, a miniatures painting company? Like yeah. Just a pair of you. Yeah. 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 Called Special yeah. Forces, it was called. Right. And right. I guess we did that for about 10 years. Yeah, and I ended up. I was painting more and more for particular clients, like uh, as it happens, Foundry, 
Yeah. And also I could do some other things for them, like photography. I'd sort of um, been taught photography and taught myself some photography. Yeah. And so that was another useful skill I could do. And eventually I sort of wormed my way into getting a job with them, really. Really? I can't put it any... Well, no, it's not fair, actually. I was friends with Mark Copplestone. Do you know Mark Copplestone? I, don't, uh, I know the name, but I don't know who that is. No, but anyway, he was a French. big, yeah. famous sculptor of uh, works for Grenadier, worked for Workshop, work, you know, well, they all work for Workshop. But, um, and he was friends with Brian Ansell, who runs yep. his Foundry. And essentially, Mark got me a job with them, really, because I was a bit of a fanboy of his, to be honest. You know, I, was, I loved his sculpting and I'd sort of written to him in a kind of cringy kind of way. And, um, and we, for some reason, we struck up a friendship and, we, and I sort of kept that going. And then he went to work with Foundry. Yep. And I said, here, Mark, can you sort of get us a job, really? So, and, he, and we did. So and, yeah, when, worked for them for a while. So when you, when you made that sort of step from, from what people might consider like the real world <laughs> in, into I'm going to turn this into I'm, this hobby or this thing that I do into in my job and try and make a make a make a yeah. was that was that a nervy sort of step were you nervous about that or were you did you, it, did you sort of think it was going to be okay from the off sort of thing I, I, unfortunately you know when you're in your 20s you don't tend to worry about it so much Today, I think I would have been in, I'd insane to give up, I'd a, 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 you know, a good job in a drawing office. I thought, well, you know, wh why would I do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I don't really know why, to be honest. We just thought, uh, like you do when you're, you know, a bit younger, you think, well, that's a good idea at the time. So we, and we thought we were, we were pretty good. And um, we thought we'd earn a lot of money, which we didn't. But we thought we'd give it a go. Uh, and it didn't really occur to me that it was my hobby and my job at the same time because I just love doing it. So yeah, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't bothered in that sense of it spoiling my hobby. Although right. later on I did sort of go through a period of that sure. and started doing other things as hobbies to mm. try and break up from it. Mm. Give me a um, break from it. I mean, but. You, you, you seem to be sort of reasonably like the, the, the different periods I've seen that you've painted, the different types of models that you've painted or different companies, like you're reasonably sort of prolific at it really. And I mean, do you, do you uh, was there a point where you realized, actually, I think I might be quite good at this. Did, did you know that early that you, that you, were, that you <laughs> had sort of a talent I, for it or did that come later? You know, I guess, I, I'm not, again, I'm not sure because I always, I always approach this as a, a technical operation rather than almost like an art operation, if you get me. I always think if you do certain things when you're painting, you can produce a certain result. Not, I mean, there is a degree of skill in it, but mostly the skill is, is putting time and effort in. You know, it's that thing where it might seem like a, an amazing thing to do, but when you realize how much effort goes into it or how much time and practice is the, that's the yeah. thing. I, but I, I don't know if I ever thought, I guess I thought when, when we set up our painting company, I guess I thought I must be good enough. Sure. You know, sure. Um, and we were thought to be as, as good as, as anybody at that time. But then that, that was very early on in painting. So the, the and when I look at people's work nowadays, you know, that some of the stuff is absolutely gobsmacking. Sure. Yeah. And, it, it and pro is, proper art, you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I think that's, we'll, we'll come on to sort of like barriers and, and barriers and sort of enablers into, into the hobby. And I think that the, the sort of inspiring standard of painting that you see that some people can do particularly when you look at some of the, the sort of prize winning games workshop stuff. Oh yeah. I sometimes think that that is almost potentially as sort of off putting as it is inspiring to somebody coming in. I guess that, yeah, I guess if, if you come at it cold, yeah, you're yeah. right. I mean, in, to us, we look at it and go, you know, that's fantastic, but that guy spent probably six weeks painting one figure. Exactly. And you think, yeah. well, fair, fair play to him, you know, I can't afford to do that. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. you know that, that's, not, that's not what the sort of painting I'm about yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Because when, I, when but, I came into the hobby three years ago, 
um, you know, I bought my first box of miniatures and I'd seen somebody who'd painted in retrospect was, was, was kind of like attempt at GW golden demon type standard of historical miniature. Yeah. And I gone, yeah, I'm going to paint all my like that. I'm going to learn how to paint all of my miniatures like that. Yeah. It's probably a bit <laughs> over ambitious. <as> a start. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And now, I now realize that that's even, that's even wildly ambitious, even like, like several years in. So. Yeah. I mean, I that? think that one of the things I did in my, the first book I did, was i mean people don't pro probably don't remember that i did it but in that there is like there is a basic level of how how to paint and how to get a bit better and how to get better so you know people think that i'm all about just painting to to a very high standard and and that's i, I mean i like to do that but that's not all i do you know i do some very simple stuff and i quite like single color stuff when people don't shade it i like yeah. I, my trouble i like it all really yeah, you know, I'm very very yeah. Catholic about my type. My only real thing is neatness, really. Yeah, I, I like things to be neat, and I reckon if you can do a neat job, you can get away with hell of a lot. Yeah. Oh, and do a nice shield as well. Do a yeah. nice shield, yeah. nice base, nice shield, nice base, and make it neat, and you'll get away with almost anything. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. Actually, thinking about it, yeah, yeah. I think oh, always put a nice shield on, and people just see the nice great. shield. Look at the shield. <laughs> yeah, look at the shield. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, I remember doing that in painting competitions before, thinking, that, how, how can I win this painting competition? And, yeah, you just go for a, doing a nice shield. So do you get you, away with murder. Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you, so do you, is it fair to that you still paint a lot for your own pleasure now, as in, you, you know, you're still knocking things out that probably aren't, aren't specifically for work? Are you still doing that? Not as much as I would like. I get, I get distracted by the latest thing that comes along for work. Um, but I do try and do some of my own stuff as well. I mean, recently I did a big project with a friend of mine to do that. Well, it's sort of work related because it's for Oathmark. I don't know if you know the Oathmark. I know Oathmark, yeah, yeah. I've read about that. Um, and we wanted to do an, an evil and a good army for Oathmark what, during the lockdown kind of thing. So we did a big sort of project together with that. And that, that's just, that was just for our own entertainment, really, because we're both Lord of the Rings fans. And we wanted to do Lord of the Rings armies for Oathmark. So that's what we did. But that was all single colour stuff then done with um, the splosh it on shady varnish stuff. So, yeah. you know, and turned them out. They're in the, actually, they're in a box up there at the moment. Oh, yeah. If only it was worth showing them to you on that camera. <laughs> yeah. Pro Which probably we'll, isn't. Well, maybe bring but up I some pictures. You, I could send yeah. you some pictures. Yeah, that's what yeah. I always ask people to do is when we, when we talk about these, like send me some pictures of the stuff that we're talking about. I have I'll probably over the top, yeah. I've probably fifty thousand pictures on one on my computer. Really? So. Maybe not the fifty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I won't send them all to you. Not in one go. We'd have to talk for a long time to cover that. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it sounds like you, you kind of answered my question, I think, already. But I'm always in, when I see people who can paint, paint like like you can paint, I'm always sort of intrigued as to whether they have an art background. By that, they've they've done art at college or university no, and it no, looks no. like you've never done that now yeah. drawing drawing office is the only thing i can confess to yeah uh, which kind of train trained us how to how to draw obviously yeah that yeah. was drawing with a set square and uh in those days and sure. then ink pens and stuff like that uh so I was, it wasn't freehand drawing i've never never been a great freehand draftsman sure uh, i'll leave my missus to do that she's very good Fair enough. um yeah. So no, I don't really have a proper art background, much as I would like to. So everything, like. everything we see, sorry, is pure. It's purely stuff that you've learned yourself. There's no, you don't have a, a teacher as such, or a mate, apart from your dad, maybe in no, day, no, year one or whatever. But, but I, I watched a lot of people. You know, yeah. I was fortunate. They say the club I went to, Selwig, also had a, a modelling section, which is quite unusual for a war games club, and it no longer has that. But back in the day, it had a. Uh, they mostly did big figures, you know, 54 mils, 54 mil, you know, large or larger. Um, and there were a couple of guys there who were just great. A bloke called Max Longhurst, um, who was, yeah, at the top of, of that sort of game. He was in a magazine called Military Modeling. I don't know if you ever seen that, which is the more yep. serious sort of side of, yep. of uh, military modeling type stuff. And he painted a lot of stuff there, but he was at the club. So yeah, I used to chat to him quite a bit and see his work. And although it, it didn't directly influence, it influenced me because it was very different on the big figures. 
but I'd pinch odd stuff like basing and sort of things like that, you know, making a nice looking base on a figure, just little bits like that and just chatting to him about painting because he was always fascinated by our small figures, you know, because he, he hated, he wouldn't paint tiny stuff. He, he, he always hated it. Um, so, yeah, but we had a quite an interesting relationship. Unfortunately, so they don't have it at Selwig anymore. It's kind of a thing that sort of withered away. I guess specific clubs, you know, modelling clubs do that rather than, you know, combining yeah. it with a, with a, within a war gaming club. Sure. And I think when I, when I look at your, because you definitely got a style, I think. Do you, yeah, I would say so. Yes. A hundred percent. And I can, if you showed me, you know, three or four models painted by random people and one of yours is in there, I like to think I, prob I could probably pick it out. And I think that, that what, what you, what I like about your style and what people why it's popular is I think that it's like it's de it's always very neat. It's that cleanliness is a word I use. So it's a, it's a it's too too so. too clean sometimes. I, yeah. I, I have real trouble making things dirty. Yeah, there's a cleanliness to it, and mm. there's a, a sort of um, how do I say this? There's a sort of the, the the understanding of the different shades of color from from low light to high light is very there's a very sort of kevin dallimore look to stuff where there's that kind of i must look at stuff and i can't work out sometimes whether you've blended it in inverted commas or not or whether you well, can answer that up. i can answer that question yeah. for you easy i've never blended anything in my never, life never never <laughs> so no. everything is everything you see is just ca is careful layers yeah it might be quite Very a lot of layers yeah how many yeah, it, on a good minute on a good one, you know, that's going to go. It, in a can, it can be online. seven. It can be yeah. seven layers, which is ridiculous, really, because it takes too long. But yeah. uh, if, if I want to bang them out quick, I, I, I try to keep it to three layers if yeah. I can. Which is the classic, so, you know, yeah. low light, mid and high light. Yeah. 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 But what I think was noticed about you is you say, say you've got a guy in a, I don't know, uh, a red coat or a blue yeah. coat or something like that. Because I'm because when, when I'm trying to get better at stuff, I think oh, I'm not very good at this color. I'm not very good at that color. I don't understand that very well. And why why whenever I paint a color like this, does it always look crap? Then then I'll go and find something that you've done or someone else has done, and I'll zoom right in. Yeah. Right into someone's into like the arm of the guy, and I'll look, I'll look right. So where's the low light? And then when's he gone from there? When's he gone up? And how's he done that? And what I, I think that the correct me if I'm wrong, but you I think you've got a very fine understanding of that what where if you're going to start from that particular deep red or, or dark blue and then you go to the mid and then you go all the way up to the highlight you seem to have a really tight knowledge of if you're going to start with a what b should be and what c should be we'll get we'll, and, and, and i suppose yeah. that the, the 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 triad system which we'll get to in a minute is a natural sort of extension of that but is, is that fair to say is that is that just practice with different paints or different colors or both or what, what's the key to that do you think i'm it's afraid it, it's mostly practice yeah it's not it's hard for me to judge really because it's not something i consciously think about almost i'm almost like you know reaching for the the white or something to add to a color without almost consciously thinking about it and, and, and people say, well, how much do you add? And I say, well, I can't really tell you because I don't know how much paint you've got. You know, I don't know what you started with. So, and, yeah. and you can't do it by milliliters. You can't say, well, if you have 10 milliliters of this, you add 0.5 of a milliliter. Because, I mean, who can measure out 0.5 of a milliliter? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've got yeah. to, it's almost you've got to do it by feeling and trying it out. I, I, actually, I could go and get them for you, but I never really, I never, mix a paint and then just slap it on the figure i always try it on a on a palette first i mix it up in little pots so i've got enough to do what i want to do and then i try it on a palette first and then when i add the highlight in when say i'm adding white to it i'll add some white but then i'll try that first on my palette next to the you know the base color i've done and i'll do the same as i go i never just apply it straight to the figure because sometimes you need to adjust it. You think, oh, that's not enough, or that's too much. I've got to add a bit more of that, or, or I need a bit more of that. So I always try it first. Just a little splodge, just so you can see it's right, and then you go, all oh, right, okay, I know that's right. Then I can go and apply it to the figure. Because you might as well. It only takes a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, rather than paint it all over the figure and go, oh, blimey, that's too dark. 
yeah. And, and out of curiosity, is that a, is that a wet palette in inverted commas or is that a dry palette? No, I use, I don't use a, a palette as such. The the um, what I mix the paint up in is is hard to believe, but they're actually the 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 lids of uh, humble. Do you know old humble humble um, enamel paints? Yeah, little, yeah, yeah, yeah. I found lit. some in a box the other day. You know, they have a little yeah, depressed yeah. lid. A little, the little fissure in the top. That's yeah. it. Yeah, the and metal ones. My, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, the metal ones. Yeah, I mix my paint up in them. Yeah. However, they've had so many years of paint mixing in. Instead of being like that much, there's <laughs> probably amazing. about that much just layers and layers of paint where I've scooped out the middle and wiped it out after I've finished. And so I mix my paint up in there, but. What I try the paint out on is just some old card. That's so my amazing. paints, yeah, my yeah, paints yeah. kept wet in those the, the, the little lids of the humble. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that's fine. And and there's a nice little tin, tin body that, that holds it. Yeah. So you can hold the paint. You're not knocking it over. Yeah. So I mix the paint up in there. Try it out on me on me card. Sorry, I said palette, but I didn't. Um, it's just a bit of card. Yeah. And yeah. try it out. Make sure it's the right color. Add a bit more white if I need to, or a bit more black, or whatever that which. Yeah. Yeah. Every way I'm doing it, and so, so I've got a nice amount because what I hate doing is getting halfway through a figure and not having enough paint, and then having to get you know. Having to start yeah, I hate that as well. Really if frustrates you, me. If you spent time getting the right color and then you're doing mm. six six guys, six dudes, yeah, that's with right, longbows yeah. or something. Because I yeah. I find I like to try and try and get a, a sort of distinctive color to longbows because kind of like you or. Or, yep. or whatever, a U longbow, when you look at it in real life, it's not just brown. It's a certain type of brown. So I'll try and replicate that, and, and I'll never quite get it right, but I get something near it, and then you mix up enough in the, on, on your little palette, and then you get six dudes in, and you do the seventh, oh, I've run out. I've got to try and remix it, yeah. So I know what you mean yeah. by that, yeah. That's yeah. interesting, because there'll be a lot of people, you know, who, who, who might be listening to this, who who were trying to learn to paint like I did sort of a couple of years ago. Uh, and they, they discover this thing called like the wet palette and wet blending and all that sort of stuff. And I'm not going to knock that at all because many people. Oh, no, not at all. No, no, no. I think people do lovely no, jobs with it. Yeah, Absolutely. they do. They do. But I think it's really interesting yep. that you don't, you don't use one. Um, because I, I do. And I really like using the wet palette cause just because it keeps my paint wet for no other reason. Oh, yeah. I keep my, my paint wet in the little pot. Yeah. But some you know, people see essentially yeah mine's in a little in a little in, sort of lid. in a pot yeah 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 but some people sort of see the wet palette as the first stage to being good at painting if you like but there's, there's people like yourself who obviously don't use one which is fascinating um great so that takes me on to just out of curiosity um yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> and if you are contra contractually obliged please feel say so feel free to say so but, but what paint do you generally use Oh, I see. Um, I, I, I'm a bit of a whore about paint. I'll, I'll use stuff that people give me for Anything. free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the main, the main thing is if they give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. I like. So you're not fussy. You don't have a particular brand. Or I use all my work for work for for North Star. Yeah. And they 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 stock uh, army painter. Right. Right. Uh, the the army painter, I think it's called, which sounds a bit grand, doesn't it? When you have put a V yeah. in front yeah. of it, but yeah. anyway, army paint, that's and I use I use mostly them because that's what work supplies me with. Otherwise, yeah. I'd have to buy it myself. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I still use quite a lot of foundry paints. Yeah, because uh, when I worked for foundry, foundry were very kind to give me lots of paints, and yeah. frankly, I'm still working my way through them. And that yeah. was oh gosh, ten years ago. Yeah, uh, they gave me a lot of paints. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I I use nearly all army painter and uh, and foundry, depending sure. what, depending what color I want really. But sure. brush brush in particular, anything for something well, like that, you know? Again, or? I again I use the foundry brushes. They're really nice. Yeah. They're actually made by a company called uh, Pro Art because obviously foundry don't make their own brushes. Nobody, you know, people. Yeah. Somebody like foundry go to a brush company and say, "Can you make me some brushes?" And when I was at Foundry, they not surprisingly asked me, well, you know, can you get us some brushes? So I went to a company called Pro Art because those are the ones I used already and said, you know, and I knew that they, they like rebrand. I don't know what you call it. They, they brand people. They'll put people's brands on a brush, their own brush, as it were. So yeah. you can sell that as your brush. You don't make the brush. Pro Art make it with your name on it. Sure. And, you sell it. Sure. and that's, what the, that's what the Foundry ones are. Um, it might oh, so they, 
so sorry, I don't know. Are they synthetic or are they na um, natural? Uh, there's there's uh, natural sable. Yep. There's a mixed and there's a synthetic. So they do three different sorts. They do sorts. three different sorts. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And they do a a quite quite good mixing brush as well, a dry brushing type brush. Do you, do you think your brush matters? Because I've tried all sorts from the two pound jobbies all the way up to the, the Windsor & Newton sort of 15 quid ones with sort of, I'd say, I'd, I'd say personally, so me personally, I think that I paint, I, I paint better with the expensive ones. I, I'm more likely to look at it and go, oh, I'm happier with that if I've, if I've used the expensive stuff than the two. I think, I think, yes, you're right. Um, to a point. I yeah. think they, they, I'm not sure. I've never bought a, uh, a brush for 15 quid, but I'm, I'm guessing they would be very good quality ones. And also they tend to last and they tend to keep a point better um, yeah. and things like that. The foundry ones are sort of mid priced uh, and are okay. And, and I, they suit my style. They suit how I paint. Cause I say they asked me to, to get yeah. the ones in that I use, and those were the ones. So they kind of, and I'm sort of habituated to them. Whether whether I would do any different with, a, I'm loath to change. It's weird, isn't it? I'm loath yeah, to, yeah. to find out because it's almost, it's not superstition as such, but I'm kind of used to using them, and I know what they do, and and I'm a commercial painter, so I want yeah. something that I can get out it's, on it's you. consistent yeah so yeah you, you know, yeah, that's, yeah yeah you don't have to spend days or weeks getting used to something sort of thing yeah yeah I yeah get that completely. i had the same thing where i because i'm i suppose the core of what i paint with is vallejo paints um and then mm. yeah they are nice paints they are they, they, yeah they do a good job and then then the, the opportunity came up to get get hold of some paints called scale 75 they were oh. the, uh, they're kind of they used i said they are used a lot by people who are painting sort of fantasy and gw stuff yeah i've, I've heard the name yeah to to a sort of uh to, to sort of grander sort of standard sort of thing and which is not what i'm trying to do but but they 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 use a lot and then i was quite nervous about bringing in a second a second group if you like into, but, but it's, it's worked out okay anyway um Great. So, so just going to, the, to Foundry and the sort of triad thing then. So, so yeah. when you're working for Foundry, I mean, because there's, there's people right who I, who I've met a, a handful who, who sort of swear by, if not, if they're not using necessarily always the Foundry paints, but they are using the Foundry paints, but they, they talk about the triad system, the, the, the sort of the triad style of painting and the way that those paints are sort of grouped together and stuff. Mm. Uh, and a couple of people I spoke to credit it with with um, sort of like cracking painting for them because because it was that it it's that well, sort it of that straightforward. Sort of, well, it demystifies it certainly, which is kind of what um, again Brian Ansell's they the idea of producing the paint range was down to him. He again said to me, "Will you design this paint range for us?" Yeah, uh, so because I. Because I'd written the book, yeah, and he wanted a paint range. To, he didn't. He didn't feel we could, you know, publish the book without a paint range to go with it, sort of thing. Yeah. Which so did Brian enough. say? Did, did, so did Brian say? Design me a paint range. Come up with an idea, or did Brian say, design a paint range that's like this? So that the idea of the the triad well, system is as a concept. Well, Brian, I'd written a couple of. I think I must have written some painting guides before before then but not obviously using the the foundry system because it didn't exist uh maybe not for foundry i can't remember now it's such a long time ago um but i painted quite a lot for brian so brian knew my stuff and liked yeah. it and he essentially said you know i want people to be able to have a go at reproducing this kind of stuff um and can you design me a paint range to to do it so I said, oh, okay, I'll have a go. Okay. So I set, set about, you know, trying to work out as many colours that... You're going to ask me what paints I painted them in, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, going to, I was going to ask you kind of like how... Uh... Do you, do you do you sort of realise or appreciate how many people probably took took up that system and, and probably 
like I said, I've heard several stories of people who, who say once, once I cottoned on to that way of thinking about it, it, it set me on the road. Did you? I guess I'd never try really, to do that. I've never really thought about it, really, how many people might have done it. I hope quite a few, I hope. I mean, I'd, I'd expect many quite... thousands. For, that, for well, me. oh, that would, that would be nice. I, I guess, you know. I, 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 I mean, I know they sold, they sold and do sell a lot of paint, so um, you know, I'm presumably people are doing something with them. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, they're, not, they're not painting the house with them, certainly. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I sort of first cottoned on to it, it's it's not exclusively how I paint sort of thing, but it it, it the, the the sort of basis of it. Um, I think that's as right. A, think... As a sort of semi beginner, it it was like oh right, that's how it works. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It was. Quite... I think that's a good thing. I think as a basis for how it works, it's a good thing. I, I, but I I would always say to people, don't just leave it at that. You know, try and try yeah. other stuff. Try mixing you know a shade in between the shades or something or try a you know a darker color or a lighter color or you know just use them as you see fit but what it definitely does do is sort of codify how it works and you either you know some some people don't take it some people aren't interested some people like it yeah um but yeah it gives a definite if you do this this and this you'll get that definitely. it doesn't always work but um you have the vague, the vagaries of paint manufacture, which was always a nightmare because colours would never be the same twice. Yeah. Um, so it was a hellish thing when you've got three colours that are meant to match or meant to complement each other. Yeah. And one goes it goes dark and one gets produced too light. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was always a problem. But it was it was not perfect. But it yeah. was. I don't think anybody's ever tried to do it actually. Anybody else? I mean, I. I I thought it was such a brilliant idea that everybody else should copy it. Well, but I don't think anybody has. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what? I don't know whether you've realised this, but if you've ever seen it online, but people have taken the principle of it and they've applied it to other paint ranges themselves. I've so, kind of heard about it. I've never actually seen it. but you know, if, you, if you look it up, it's worth you looking it up and just seeing what people have done. So I, I've seen a couple of people, they've taken the entire Vallejo range. Oh, what, and, and worked and it into they're triads. They've broken it into triads and they've painted it on a piece of paper, one, two, three, in triads. But Vallejo they? themselves haven't done that. Not as far as I can see, not not off their own back, no. And then they've oh, lab they've labelled it, you know, they've written it down. So and they've they've stuck this it on the internet and this said, goes you know, with this. And yeah, I mean it's a sensible thing to do, really. Yeah. I mean I did it with a I never did it formally with the army painter stuff because the army painter stuff doesn't really work like that. But there are a few specific ones that work quite together. They do three metallics, uh, three steel colours. And as it happens, they work out very well as a triad. They go, I can't remember the names of them at the minute. Yeah. But they go together well as a triad. But it's not really the way the army paint and stuff is set out. The, so you can't, the, there wouldn't be any point in going through and working out a load of triads. Because yeah, they're off not just designed add. that way. They're not. No, definitely yeah. not. No, yeah. but Vallejo do do such a massive range, don't they? So it's absolutely huge. Yeah. 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 I mean, he found he make I think three hundred and thirty or forty. It's well paint. over three hundred because I did look at. Yeah, it it's over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Army Paint, I I don't think I don't think they do more than a hundred. Uh, yeah, I guess I'd say Vallejo must be like eight hundred or something, or like six hundred or something like that. And they do it's, quite it's a huge. lot of specialist stuff, don't they? An awful lot, yeah. Yeah. And I should pause there to explain to people who are wondering what what the hell's a triad. So, so to, for for the beginners out there, when you're learning to paint, if you're yeah. going to paint, a, let's say you're going to paint a, a, a classic Napoleonic red coat, yeah, like a dude with a red coat, uh, and you want to make it look realistic then there's a school of thought that goes, okay, if you think about what the darkest bits of that coat would be, maybe in recesses and things where shadows would be cast, you'd pick a dark red to reflect that. Then the bits maybe that um, are a bit lighter, where you can see sort of the full colour in full light, then you might use a slightly lighter red. And then maybe if you're picking out the highlights where it maybe catches the cuff or a shoulder or something like that, you would use the lightest of those three reds. So that's your three colours, dark red, medium red, and light red. So that's yep. a triad. That's what we are on about at the moment, if you're, if you're a, a brand new beginner to this. And it's a principle that a lot of people had sort of maybe skirted around, but Kevin sort of basically pinned it down, codified it, and like we said, uh, turned it into uh, a sort of written system. And then a paint range came from that. Is that, is that a fair sum? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, I couldn't possibly say I, I invented it. I mean, people that say, oh, you didn't invent that. And you go, well, no, actually, no, I know I didn't invent that. No, because most of what I've, what I've done with my painting is look at other people's and go, oh, I like that. See yeah. if I can replicate that. Or I wonder how they did that. Or like I said, the people I met at club and things yeah. like that. So, I mean, did you find when you were creating that range? Because I know that, that, that there are some colours that are notoriously tricky to go from dark yeah. all the way up to light. I mean, yellow, mm. for example, being one of them. Yeah. Did you, did you, so for beginners, you know, if, you, if you're going to try and create a dark yellow, that can create that can be confusing or tricky because sometimes actually it's actually a, a brownie kind of color a dark yellow so mm -hmm. it's not what you so adding black to yellow won't get the result you need kind of thing so does, does there was there a color when you were creating that triad system kevin that, that you that you found tricky to replicate and or long or hard to do do you, do you remember specifically or not hard for me to design there are some colors that are hard because the pigments are difficult light red as you pointed out the initial the initial red i did i never liked to be honest um I, um it was just the way the pigment came out although now i do like it weirdly like 20 years later or something i actually do like it but at the time i was very disappointed with it because uh, it, it didn't it didn't have the punchy sort of red that i was after at that time uh i did another red later which did have a, a scarlet red but that uh, that initial red, I was quite disappointed with. But I say over time now, I look at it and think, oh, I don't know why I didn't like that. So I, I guess my perceptions have changed as well. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. Greens were, greens were always difficult again because it's a, a tricky pigment, mm. uh, tricky to get them to cover well. Uh, although the yellows that the, that they did were are actually pretty good, and particularly the um, the ochre they do is a is a lovely colour. Yeah. Really dense really dense yellow pigments which is it's a very nice color it's interesting what you say about green it's not i, I assume that was mm. me doing something wrong but it's, it's not no it's, it's, for people who don't know this though when you're painting green it doesn't just go on you, you kind of have to keep going don't you to keep yeah to you sometimes yeah, yeah yeah you sometimes need a few coats yeah i mean is, to... do you know why that is is that i mean there's presumably some kind of pigment science behind this but there must be a... I, I don't really know because You'd think that they would have cracked it by now, but it doesn't seem to. And yellow, yellow can be the same. I mean, uh, the army painter yellow, it, you, I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner, let's say. It's uh, not an easy colour to get on with. Yeah. I, would, I would tend to find something in the foundry range that's a little bit easier to, to work with. So, yeah, yeah, th there is obviously something with those pigments because everybody seems to suffer it. Sure. Uh, uh, before we move on to some slightly sort of wider stuff, then Kevin, like about the hobby uh -huh. generally, just just going to you mentioned sort of like being in painting competitions and that kind of thing, and sort of painting for competition. What what was your sort of like early experience of that then, and, and your first? Oh, horrific! Of it? Yeah, Hor horrific! <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't win. I just didn't just win anything. It was yeah. awful. Hated yeah. it. <laughs> Absolutely hated it. I mean, did um, you? Did I don't you... know why I kept, I don't know why I kept entering really. Um, I don't know, uh, stupidity possibly. Yeah. But did you did I, you did you want to win, or were you just trying to learn? Oh yeah, well that's what I tell myself because I've entered a well, couple. Well, no, I wanted to win really. Yeah, I did, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I did, I did win. I did start winning in the end. Yeah. But it took me quite a while. At what point is this then? Is this is this when you're in your twenties doing your your first business, or is it did that come later? No, it was before that. No, it was before before we were actually in business. It was when I was doing it as hobby stuff, really. And I entered quite a few at Salute and battled away a few, quite a few years, which I, I entered something that I thought, oh, well, you know, I aced it this time. No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, yeah. And I can't remember what it was that did it in the end, but something I, went, I entered that was completely outrageous in the end, and I actually won. So I was, I was pleased with that. But it took many attempts to do that then. It was, it was a number of times before you, yeah. you, you won oh, yeah, anything definitely. officially. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. It wasn't no, nowhere near straight away. God, no. Sure. And like, so speaking to somebody who's tried it twice and, and kind of averaged, it can be very bang brutal. average. It can be brutal. <laughs> it can be brutal. It's not. But, but your advice would be to keep going. <laughs> well, yeah. If, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you can stand the punishment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not a, 
it depends what you yeah it depends what you want to do doesn't it but um i found yeah i found it dispiriting to start with but it was good in a way because it made me think of how to paint things to win painting competitions whether that was a good thing or not in the long run i suppose is 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 a different matter but i, I went for stuff i knew that that I thought that judge that would appeal to judges. I went for colourful stuff. I, I didn't go for. I didn't try to do it with a World War One, you know, comp- covered in mud type. I went for the brightest uniform. I can't remember what I entered now, but it was something that was completely outrageous and as colourful as possible, just so it could catch people's eye, and it did. So it was a bit of a fake, really, because you know I was aiming it at winning painting competitions rather than being the best thing that i could do i suppose but but do you credit some of that experience and that with having to go back and and re go go at stuff with with getting good in the long run do you think that that having that oh yeah of experience is yeah definitely yeah, definitely yeah it, i mean i wouldn't enter painting competitions now God, no it'd be oh, my ego my ego couldn't stand it but <laughs> um i did actually no that's not true i i mean for quite a few years i was on a, a forum where which was a, a private forum not like not like the bare pit of like modern social media right uh, um, where we used to run painting competitions a friend of mine steve dean who is who is a very good painter um he would run painting competitions and i would enter those uh, and i did enter those and yeah i still got cut up if i didn't win <laughs> <laughs> Which is it's quite crushing isn't it because you spend yeah. a lot of time on something and yeah you, i think that's that, right. uh, because the last time I did it was uh, was ha- uh, Hammerhead, as in like the last Hammerhead that just. Oh uh, right, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, what well, the, the the this this year's Hammerhead? Yeah, the one that the one that that went. Um, oh yeah, the pre-COVID one. Yeah, the one that like, yeah. basically the, basically the last show before lockdown. Yeah, the basically. last show before. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I was there. We were running a game. Uh, what game were we? Running? I can't remember. Yeah, we were running running a game. Yeah. Oh, oh right. Yeah. What 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 did you enter in the paint? Oh dear. Did you enter the paint? <laughs> did you did you judge it? <laughs> um, yes, yes, I did. But in my defence, this is I wasn't, brilliant. I wasn't meant to be judging it. Okay. So I did. I didn't have a lot of time to look at stuff. No, Dan. Right. Um, Dan. Dan came and grabbed me. He said because the person he was got to judge it uh, couldn't turn up. Because of the right. COVID okay. Okay. So this said, is absolutely I, fantastic. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! So you did not, not win. No, of oh course dear. not. No, no. But but it was, uh, uh, I'll tell you what. I'll show you. I'll show you the picture in a minute. But uh, I'll show you a picture of what I entered. <laughs> oh, but, I'm so sorry. But tell you, no, no. This is fascinating, right? Because actually, it was quite a good experience. I quite enjoyed it because uh, because the first it was only my second go at a painting competition ever, and the first the first time I'd been in the previous summer, the previous year, right? And I had that mm. thing where. Uh, it was in there, uh, and it, I turned up, and there were. Uh, I went for historical single miniature, and uh, I stuck it in there. And uh, Sing, single miniature is always a always a bugger. Though, I know, and it's stupid. There's, no, there's nowhere, nowhere to hide. I know, I know. I'm you know, idiot. no, do I'm a idiot, do a really. do a unit. I mean, you know, so <laughs> oh, I, ne- I never did a single figure. I know. Oh, I don't know why I do oh. it to myself. No, to that honest. that is brutal. Yeah. Yeah, but I did a single figure, right? It was a uh, first year, and I, I, I turned up and I thought, as as long as it doesn't look awful, I'll be happy. And I turned up and it went in the case, and I came back an hour later or whatever, and looked in the case, and I thought, right, it doesn't look awful, but there's no way that's going to win, and it didn't win. But I, I went away happy because I thought I didn't, yeah, I didn't come back to the case half an hour later when everybody else's entries have gone in, and think, oh god, it looks, you know, and just go away like, yeah. like, like upset about it and then this year i came back to the case half an hour later and i thought "Mm, okay that's that that looks all right compared to everybody else's not the best in there definitely not but that looks okay and then i came back a bit later and it was out of the case (laughs) so it had been taken out and i saw it having a photograph taken and yeah, thought, well, oh, okay, you know, and maybe was, everyone has it taken, but I don't think. Well, no, that's no, what happens is, um, ones that are in contention get pulled out. Uh, that's the way we do it at Salute, anyway. So, I was just doing what I did at Salute, so yeah, yeah, they because just come I cut for a look, you know, I, well, I did, what I would normally do is draw, draw two or three or four out, um, 
or sometimes more depending on the category. Some of the salute categories are very hard to judge and single figure are murder at salute. I would definitely not enter those. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what it would have been. It would have been pulled out for closer inspection as it were. Yeah. So and then I got, then I got excited, you see. All yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I saw it well, gone. what would happen then is I'd look yeah, at yeah. it and probably Dan, well, Dan said he was going to look at it, but he was too busy. So yeah, yeah. I can't remember if there was somebody else there with me trying to, sh- as I try to shift the blame onto somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Uh, I'm sure there was somebody else who, not, not my fault. Obviously. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm not about to um, um, question your judgment by any stretch, but I'm just curious. I, I will tell you what I'll do. I'll bring it up. And you just tell me whether or not you, if you don't remember it, you don't remember it, but you, you might remember it. Um, okay. If oh, you don't can you remember put it, pictures you know. up on this as well? Yeah, yeah, I can screen share for you. And we'll, we'll, include, oh, this right, in the, uh, we'll include this in the final cut because people will find this very funny. This is extremely funny. Isn't that bizarre? Oh, it's a small world though, isn't it? You know, it's well, it is. World. I can't. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we are, yeah. we are in, yeah. I we did quite a small pond. It's I true. did. I did wonder who who did the judging, right? Um, but I just didn't. I just didn't bother to ask or look up. Really. I can't remember who I was meant. I suppose to I should be. at least think about it, shouldn't I? Really. Dan did. Uh, Dan did tell me who it was meant to be doing it, and I, I can't remember. So this is my Twitter feed. That for people who can't see what we're doing, uh, who are listening to this this now extremely funny interview, uh, let's oh, like let's, let's find. <laughs> thank you. I'm sharing Kevin my Twitter feed. When I go, where are we? July. If I go down there long enough, we'll find him. And he is what he is. He's a. I'll tell you what he is. He's a 15th century Perry miniatures plastic, uh, Burgundian captain dude. Is how I describe okay. him. He's a, he's a guy in Burgundian livery. Uh, he's got a bit of non-metallic metal going on because I thought I'd show off or try to show off. Uh, wait, that's him there, but I'll find you. The oh. Photograph of him. Where is he? Somebody, there he is. There he goes. There, there he is. Yeah, he looks all right, doesn't he? He's all right. Yeah, he's all right. He's the, yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's the best. He's probably the best one I've ever done where I've spent time. I like time your... Your, um, your, your non-metallic metal. It's all right. Very effective. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Do you remember it or not? No. No, fair enough. But to be honest, though, Chris, <laughs> I, I don't remember half the stuff I've painted. So, you know. Yeah. And yeah, also, no, like no. you say, there's been an awful lot of water under the bridge since then, hasn't there? Yeah, of course, yeah. And if you didn't win... If you didn't win... No, I just consign you instantly to oblivion. Yeah, just like, nah. <laughs> I like his um, his slashed uh, his slashed doublet with the yeah, Burgundian yeah. with the Burgundian cross either side is nice. I like that. Yeah, it's a really nice sculpt to paint. It's just a fancy th- thing to say, isn't it? But it, his his coat on top of his armor, yeah, he's got all those, those folds and plate pleats yeah, in it. Yeah, it's quite yeah. it's quite easy to. to so be what's honest. that? Is that out of the Perry plastic box? Is that? Yeah, it's a Perry plastic that is. Yeah, that I've stuck on a, a like a display oh, uh, do mount thing. Stuff, don't they? I mean, it's amazing, isn't it, to think that is a plastic that, that I've just stuck together with super glue, uh, yeah, and 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 farted them out with kind of thing. Yeah, they're they're, they're standard their plastics. It's pretty. It's mm. it's a it's a good good example, isn't it, yeah. of showing showing off the standard their plastics with that coat on his his armor. Yeah. So yeah. 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 yeah they do nice stuff. They're nice guys as well. Do you have you met them? I have met them. Yeah, yeah I've met them. Are, they are, they are, they are a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, they're lovely blokes. Absolutely yeah. lovely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I am lucky to have met them a couple of times and had conversations with them. Yeah. Anyway, so that is that is very funny. So when you're, I mean, do you normally do you normally judge stuff then, or is that? Um... No, not normally. No, it's just Dan asked me because yeah. I was there. I think he was the only person. I was the only person he knew that might be competent to do it, I think. So he, sort of gra- he sort of grabbed me. That's absolutely fascinating. And like, did you find that hard, that experience then? Like, did, what, judging? Did it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I always find it really difficult. It, if you don't do it regularly, yeah. It's, it's yeah, I do find it really difficult. I do it at Salute because they kind of, I think they feel obliged to ask me because I'm like a club member and a painter. So they, they sort of think that I want to do it. I don't, I don't really want to do it, but. They, they very kindly ask me and I feel obliged to say yes as well. So I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but fortunately, there's other people there doing it. So there's usually yeah. about... It's oh, a group of you. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, group yeah, responsibility. So. Yeah, absolutely. Blame those yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Well, yeah, I can pick out the one I actually like, and then then they all they'll all go for something yeah. else, and then I don't feel so bad then. I mean, what what do you particularly look for then when you're trying to choose? And you think, like, well, that that is. Uh, we won't go. I won't go on about this too long. But like, what do you what do you do, when you're I, going I through go the end? Do you mean do you think what separates the top five from the bottom five? I'm afraid I just go for what I like. Yeah, I really just yeah. look at it and go, do I like? You know, I really like that. Or, and if I'm splitting hairs, then if there's two that I really like, then I'll look to say, oh, uh, perhaps the the. the the footwork you know the groundwork's not quite so nice on that one or yeah the, you know just literally to split hairs down but I, I yeah i generally go for what i like uh yeah. that just appeals to me as a person yeah. rather you than just look at it and go, i like that you know, you're yeah yeah i really like that yeah you're not picking things up and looking for tiny technical things or you're looking for mistakes. not really no, no. No. only to split hairs only if there's like two t- together or something that i really just need to separate up and you've got to separate them up somehow. And you've got to find something. And, you've got to find something. Yeah, if you've got to find yeah. something, yeah. But I don't know. I don't go in for the, you know, always done that bit wrong or, or that, you know, I don't, I'd rather just go for what I like rather than what I don't like. Yeah. So that's cool. what I tend to do. Sure. That's really helpful. Oh, that's fascinating. Right. Anyway. But, but no, that's a, that's a good choice. <laughs> but not single figure is really hard. I know, like but I, said, I can't stop myself because you unit, do the unit. Do it, it's much easier. <laughs> yeah, maybe I will do next time. But I, I thought think of the unit. I, I thought of the unit I painted up. It was the unit of samurai. Oh, That's was it? why I painted up. Yeah, because, and, and they were so blisteringly colourful. And I did ba- uh, pavises for them. You know, you know, like your yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, Only the yeah. samurai have like big propped up ones. Yeah. And but I did them all with like samurai artwork on the front. You know, like uh, Japanese artwork on the front. I did like wow. Mount, Fu- Mount wow. Fuji and I did a, uh, you know, the, uh, what do they have in, not trout, carp in a pond. So I did all those ones. Brilliant. And yeah, and I did ace at that time. I did win. But yeah. I was really trying. Send a picture of those so we can, if you uh, got, one. Got one? I don't, I don't think I have. Oh, no. That, no, oh, that was no. Pre, pre-photography, well, pre-my photography days. Oh, God, yeah. that is a real shame because actually the person that owns them, it's probably still i think yeah he's definitely still got them so i could even borrow them back one day and photograph them. yeah oh, well. although not at the, under present circumstances again yeah but yeah yeah he he will still own them yeah 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 well, that's interesting right well, well, anyway that's, yeah sorry yeah, but that's, that's all right <laughs> painting competitions, yeah, over. Painting competitions <laughs> over yeah the paint the serious, i think we've done that i think we've done serious painting, painting stressful bit yeah so we'll, what we'll do is um well, what I do now, Kevin, is like we'll edit, edit that to, down to about yeah. That's going to have to string that down when I'm scrolling through a Twitter feed. <laughs> yeah. So what we'll have to do now, yeah. Kevin, is, is is like we've, yeah, we've sorry. sort of done the the paint bit, and I'm now interested as as somebody who's who's kind of like known and respected in the hobby kind of thing, like what and has been involved in it for a long time. Um, I have. Your your views on some of these sort of like big big questions that kick around the hobby a lot, and I know some of them go go round again and again really yeah um but but i'm, I'm really interested to, to to know your your thoughts i mean bearing in mind obviously it's your it's it's your job and it has been for a long time you know what 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 do you um what do you personally get out of it you know what, uh, at this stage in your career and life sort of thing what, what what do you enjoy about it like what brings you satisfaction from it i still what, it's what's still the, benefit? the same really as it's always been is going from a, a little miniature that's like not painted to a little miniature that is it sounds weird doesn't it but yeah. it's, I, don't, it's I know exactly what you mean put into yeah. words it's yeah. i kind of imbue these things as i'm working on it i have you know i have a little backstory of what's happening with this figure going on in my head while i'm sitting there or i'm often listening to an audio book while i'm painting and I'm thinking about, you know, gaming with this miniature or doing the photography with this miniature or something. And yeah, it, it just, it doesn't become alive, as it were, but it's, there's a story behind it. And that, that for me is what I love. I love the fact yeah. that we create these things from, not from nothing, obviously, but I like, I like to see the miniature appearing out of the black undercoat, which is what I use into like being a fully finished miniature and then on the table and or sent off to a, you know the customer and hopefully they're pleased with it and they play with it and 
or like I do, sit, stick them in a cupboard and you know look at America. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I really Open must do a game with. Really must do a game with those. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that's. I just still get a kick out of it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, is and, it, is and, it, um, and pays the rent too. I must not forget that. Of course, of course, that's very important. I mean, do, yeah. do, do you? Is there is there a a project or a, whether it's a miniature that someone asked you to paint or or an army or anything? Is there, is there something you look back on that you're most proud of that you think that because uh, um, it's a lot of painters are kind of like they're very self-critical and they, they don't they don't really love anything that they've they've done they they like it and they think they're always constantly looking back and stuff and think i could have done that better couldn't that better like that yeah that not not in me i have quite a time before that i look back on stuff and then then i quite like it, it takes me quite a while before i quite like it I don't know whether it's because I'm producing at the time when I'm producing it. Yeah. You know, it's fine. And, I, and I'll finish the job and think, Oh yeah, I quite like that. And then I'll, then immediately afterwards, I think, Oh, I, I could have done, oh, I'm not quite sure I did that. I didn't like that. Or, mm. and then it takes me quite a while before then I look back on it. Maybe a couple of years later, I'll see some photographs of it. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, do you know Frostgrave? The, 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 yeah, I know Frostgrave. The, yeah. I don't play yeah. it, but I know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I first did the painting and photography from that, because uh, I did it all in the original book, I was a bit concerned because I, I didn't think I'd done a very good job. And everybody said, oh, you know, it looks fine. And I thought, oh, well, okay. and, and I, I assumed that I must have done. But now I go back and look at it and thought, actually, yeah, I did, I did an all right job, actually. I, you know, I did okay sort of thing. And now I'm really pleased with it. Although at the time I really wasn't, I thought, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I do. Would you I, say I that book is a is a favourite project of yours? And is that something that you you look back on yeah, and you're sort of proud of? Yeah. yeah, it probably is. The frost grave thing was quite. There's quite a lot to it. You yeah. know, I painted a lot of miniatures, and I did a lot of photography, and there was quite a lot of books in the series. I can't remember how many there are. It's about six, yeah. I think. Yeah. And I did all the nearly all the paintings. There's a few other painters in there as well, but sure. And I did all the photography for it. And it was nice. I got to work with Joe, the author, Joe McCulloch. Yep. And, and, you know, that was for, you know, that was working at North Star doing that. And yeah, it was just great. They gave me the opportunity to do it really. Sure. And I mean, Osprey themselves are quite, you know, quite a hard task master, you know, cause they're a big publishing company and they got copy dates and, yeah, you know, they cracked sure. the whip a bit, but, um, yeah, yeah, no, that was a very satisfying project, and it's you know still an ongoing project. You know, yeah, sure. For people that don't know, so Frostgrave is a is a sort of it's a it's a fantasy uh, war games game where people sort of battle through a ruined city is the sort of premise of it. Yeah, uh, and and Kevin did a lot of the the painting and photography, as he said, for for the the series, the book series. It's which an an Osprey Games and North Star team up, I think, essentially, wasn't it? Yeah, Frostgrave. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Osprey essentially doing the publishing of the book and North Star producing the figures. Yeah. And, you know, me as a member of North Star painting the figures and doing the photography and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that was, and yeah, that was a big project. And, and yeah, very satisfying to do. Yeah, good. How long ago was that? It wasn't that long ago either, was it? That's just relatively uh, recent history we're talking about here, isn't it? Five, five years uh, five ago. Five years ago, yeah, yeah. It was the first one. They've just brought out the second edition yeah. uh, of the basic rules. Sure. Um, but no, one of the things I did have to do that for the first edition was um, because it was so tight, the production of the figures with the book, that some of the figures that, in, that appear in the book aren't actually the small 28 mil size figures. They are the original three ups, which they make before they then pantograph those down to make the plastic figures. Because I don't know if you've seen the Perrys do that. Have you seen the, yeah, the, the three ups? Yeah, the they've big, seen. Yeah. Yeah, you don't yeah. often have to paint them. Whereas I had to paint the, the three ups. Right. And then pretend that they were the small figures, photograph them against some large <laughs> stuff. So they look small figures. <laughs> right. So, right. In the original book, are actually three ups. They're not. They're not That's the, uh, fascinating. That's right. Uh, although, obviously, they look like the 28 mil ones. but yeah. And they're a right pain to paint. They're just so huge. Because I'm, yeah. you know. I haven't painted a figure bigger than that for years. No, I've only I've painted a forty-eight mil once. I quite enjoyed yeah. it actually, which isn't quite a three yeah. up, is it? Or is it? No, it's not. It's not a three up. But no, yeah, it's painted, about double painted, size. Yeah. 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 No, fifty-four. Sorry, I've painted a fifty-four. Fifty-four. Yeah. Yeah. 54, yeah. These are about uh, well about ninety mil, I think. Yeah. More yeah. Or less. That is but big, it's isn't the, it, actually. Yeah. 
Well, the problem is not just the three up, but the the actual area, of course, is uh, is cubed. It's not squared. So the, so the the actual ah. the, the actual larger surface area. So they're three times three times three is the surface area. So right. it's actually a, a lot more work to do right. than just it's not twice the work. It's not three times the work. It's nine times the work. Wow. Yeah. Which yeah, which they did take a while, and I was yeah, sick of the sight of them to be honest. Yeah. I was just glad to get rid of them when they're gone. But yeah, yeah, that's a thing I did enjoy. And the other thing, the other projects I like were doing, you know, publishing me books. Yeah. yeah the family yeah. books. Yeah, right, right you say, because I know a lot of people who have got them and I've, I've read them myself. And, and I know a lot of people that are in their collection, you know, they're, they're definitely, you know, and lots of war gamers have been doing it for a while. I've got big book collections, that sort of stuff. And it's definitely a staple, isn't it? Your, your sort I of hope stuff. so. Yeah. So and again, I had to do everything. I did the photography. I did. Yeah. I even did the book layout for those. Can you believe? Really? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, moving on to some other bits and pieces like general stuff yep. that do you, do you think this has been going around a lot on the internet lately I don't know whether you've, you've mm -hmm. noticed it but it was started by Little Wars TV which is a YouTube channel which started this debate re reignited the debate shall we say is is the hobby and by the hobby I mean I generally mean the non-games workshop um, yeah um, or gaming hobby is it on the way up or on the way down I think it must be on the way up Mm. Certainly, from where we, from where I'm, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Um, I've I've never known so many. I mean, like you say, I've been doing this a long time, and I've never known so many companies, games, figures that just seem to keep coming. I don't know how, but I assume people must be buying them. So, yeah, I I think it's on the still on the. I mean, it's not meteoric, but I think it's. Up rather than down, safe and steady kind of thing. It's safe yeah. and steady progress forwards. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. yeah and just... I, I mean, I still get interested and get caught up in things. Yeah, you know, I do. <laughs> I mean, the last thing I do, uh, I, the, the, I don't know if you saw the uh, Fireforge games, the Byzantine Kickstarter they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah I bought into that. You did know. you? You went for it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, insane. I'm never going to get a chance to, to to paint them, but <laughs> I thought. <laughs> you know, it's Byzantine. And Byzantines was my first love. You know, my really, my, yeah. My first, my first from that toolbox you spoke about before. Yeah, yeah. my first, yeah. my first historical army was Byzantines, and then I always tend to go back to them. In mean, I have, I've probably done four or five different Byzantine armies over the years, so I thought I might as well do an all plastic one when Fireforge yeah. actually. Hopefully, they'll turn them out, but yeah, we'll see. That's useful because the next question is yeah, and you have to pick one or the other. Metal or plastic? Oh no! <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. Uh, it would, it would. If I have to pick one, yeah. it will be metal. And I'll tell, I'll tell you. There's a couple Go of on. reasons why. Go on. Yeah. Because my dear friend Mark Copplestone only does metal figures. He doesn't sculpt in plastic. He's, he's, he's even more old school than I am. For Christ's sake, you know. He's, you know, he should be retired by now. Um, so if I had to, it would, if I had, could only have one, it would be that, it, and it would be for that. And also because you can recycle metal figures, uh, you can melt them down and make another figure or again and again and again. So yeah, metal, I'm afraid. Sure. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah. With a lot of caveats though, you notice how heavily I caveat that. <laughs> No, that's fine. At least I got an answer because normally, normally Kevin, I don't get one. People, oh. I've, I've had people point blank refuse <laughs> to answer. Oh, so right. no, no, can't, no, I'm not choosing. No, I'm <laughs> so not. I'm not. I'm not a great, great fence sitter. I have to. So say. no, it's good that you did. It's good that you did. Well done. Um, so yeah, uh, having like gone on to the little wars thing there with regards to sort of whether or not their hobbies in, in decline or, or, or ascendance mm. kind of thing, uh, which is a question I like to ask people just I like to see their reaction because I'm, I'm new to the hobby as in, you know, the, there are a lot of people that have been in it for a very long time. Uh, and, and now there's a, a sort of, there is elements of a new generation as such coming in who I suppose I'm, I'm allegedly. Yeah. I've got, I've got no, I've got no idea how old you are. So I'm, I'm 38. Oh, blimey. You're at, a wee, wee strip yeah. of a thing, aren't you? Oh, yeah, which is the thing, isn't it? Which, which is considered to be a young war gamer, as far as I can work out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's but right. For, yeah, for yeah. historical, you are a young blood. Yeah, yeah. As, as far as historical oh, yeah, goes, yeah, I'm, 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 
Yeah, as far as historicals go, I'm considered a bit of a spring chicken. Maybe not the youngest, but certainly in the, not the younger generation of historical war gamers. Yeah. Um, and do you think that's a problem in in the the historical war gamers? T- tend to be older and there's a there's a there's a perception among some people that the average age is getting older and that is perhaps not a brilliant thing i think that may well that may be true um i'm i'm not i'm it doesn't bother me in in the sense that older people do different things to younger people or whatever i'm not not fussed about that the only thing that bothered me is yeah the of the essentially the hobby dying out but i'm guessing that younger people will come through eventually from where they've always come through from which is essentially fantasy and science fiction gaming or do both you see i mean i've always done both you know right back to start with although i spoke to byzantine i spoke to you about byzantines you know with my first thing but at the same time i was doing D &D with my brother really so you know i've always done both it's, it's that's never, interesting it's, yeah i think you're probably the first person who's ever said i'd do both and i've always done both because it, mm. everybody else who i've spoken to is is, is started off in sci-fi or, or, and, and fantasy be it gw or something else and then they've moved into historicals and even if they've not completely left fantasy and sci-fi behind they've probably got bits and pieces and dabble a little bit they're very much move to one or the other or they settle on one or the other you're yeah. not that, that at all then you you completely no i'll go fairly mixed i mean to be honest chris as well it's partly my work because north star do all sorts yeah. of stuff so i yeah. have you know i have to move across from doing historical yeah. to fantasy to science fiction to to whatever so i don't really get a choice but that would be my choice anyway so I, it doesn't bother me you know yeah uh, my greatest love the fantasy love is, is lord of the rings but i would do other fantasy stuff as well um, you know, Frostgrave, Dungeons and Dragons, all sorts, and the s- historical stuff as well. I'd like all sorts of historical periods. Yeah. You know, I have yeah. great loves like Byzantines and Mulberians and stuff, and I'm not a big fan of Napoleonics, but it wouldn't stop me doing it. Yeah. You know, I yeah, just, sure. I just sure. like it all, really. Sure. And Easy it, to please. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I'm, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm starting to get a bit like that with historicals because I started out swearing to myself that i'd only do wars of roses until i'd finished my wars of roses collection mm. and recently i've started to dabble a little bit but anyway yeah you should uh, definitely dabble definitely yeah i am dabbling a little bit in, in other periods right so uh, last couple of questions um mm-hmm. we've spoken a bit about it, it, previously about different games and things and and, and 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 trends in the hobby we've hinted at it and there's a, a sort of general sort of trend at the moment where there's lots of uh, designers bringing in uh, what are known as skirmish style games uh, that 's definitely a sort of a, a trend I think that 's fair to say I mean, oh gosh yeah you, do you think they 're a good thing yeah, I think so yeah. i mean uh, they 're bread and butter obviously for the fantasy and science fiction side yeah you, you can't you can 't move for skirmish games yeah and I kind of think it was inevitable that the historical stuff would go that way as well. Um, but that doesn't stop you having big games. I mean, I like doing a big game as well. I like doing skirmish games. And you won't be surprised to know that I like doing big games as well. So. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I'm lucky enough to go to two clubs, or when we could go to a club, we're not allowed to at the moment, but yeah. Yeah. that both of them consist of over 100 members. So there's, you know, there's almost wow, nothing that's that amazing. they don't do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Selwig is 80 odd members and well, I can't remember what the world is, but so there's always, you know, there's lots of people there who do lots of different stuff. So, you know, it's not like you can only do one thing. And yeah, I would say, yeah, I mean, when you say skirmish games, historical skirmish ones, you mean like sort of um, uh, Lion Rampant and things like that? Yeah, Lion mean? Rampant and things yeah. like that. Uh, Infamy Infamy which has come out recently with Two Fat Lardies and all the stuff like Sharp Practice that kind of oh, stuff oh yeah Sharp Practice is good isn't it yeah yeah yeah. cool last one then so it, what would you have having seen all these things and been and actually been involved with a lot of these new trends and developments and, and innovative stuff and been involved in, in, in some way uh, and still having like you just said being tempted by kickstarters and trying all sorts of different oh, things. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. What would you like to see 
over the next 10 years in terms of, you know, is there a particular thing, do you think line of miniatures or type of miniatures that, that we're missing out on at the moment or, or a style of game or anything like that that you'd like to see that, that's not out there? or a, a sort of crossover between two manufacturers or anything like that i know there's so much stuff now chris yeah you know yeah. I, I mean uh, i don't know a range of early byzantines would be nice you know <laughs> made, made sculpted by my dear friend mark cobblestone you know perhaps i might get it out of him one day Who there knows? you go mark if you're listening you know. uh, it's <laughs> unlike, a it's unlikely that he's listening and even if he was he wouldn't do it but he, <laughs> you know uh, the campaign starts here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's the problem is I, I, I guess like a lot of people in the hobby, is I'm I quite like the fact that stuff comes along and you go, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't have a great li list myself, but like that Kickstarter that came up for the Byzantines, I thought, oh yeah, that oh yeah, I could quite do some of that. Or there might be something else that comes. Up. I just saw an advert from Warlord. Um, about they're doing a 176 scale version of their Blood Red Skies uh, uh, with Airfix kit, you know, Air, 170 second Airfix kits. I thought, wow, that just sounds amazing. That I'd love to have good. a go of that. That does sound good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even to me, that sounds good, like Mr. Medieval. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought, oh, we're Airfix. Oh, Airfix 170 second. Yeah, you get a Spitfire and a, and a Mistress Mini. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's like dog fight doubles back in the day. Yeah. Um, so, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that, that somebody probably isn't working on at this very moment. Sure. Uh, so, no, I haven't got any massive revelations to, to bring. Perhaps I'd like to write another painting book. That'd be great. Um, yeah. If I'd ever, but it's getting the time and the, and yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. And, and the will to do it, really. Sure. Uh, so maybe, yeah, that would be my thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll write another painting book. Great. Last thing, I mean, if there's somebody listening to this who's just tuned in because they saw your name and they wanted to learn a bit about painting yeah, uh, and get into it and, and get a bit better and get into the hobby and, and, and learn new things, what would you say to them to convince them to, to start and make the jump and get, get, get into that painting table and get something out and get going? What would you say to them? Um, just find something that you're really interested in. Or something that sparks your imagination, whether you've been watching a film or TV series or something, you watch Game of Thrones and you fancy, you know, you've seen the, comp, the battle scenes in that, which are some of the most amazing battle scenes I've ever seen. And just want to create a little bit of that or something, just the, the, the thrill and the, you know, of being a commander of a unit or, you know, ha directing an army or something, just something that inspires you, whether it's watching... Yeah, anything on the telly or listening to an audio book or something, just, just something that just grabs you and just run with it and see what you can produce. And, you know, don't be afraid of having a go because, you know, we all started somewhere and you're very kindly going to show people, Chris, those pictures of the first miniatures I painted. <laughs> and you'll see. <laughs> Bring them up again <laughs> at this point. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. um, and Yeah, and just have a go. I would. And just Brilliant. enjoy it. I would, yeah. That's it, really. Yeah. Brilliant. Kevin, it's been really, really interesting. I mean, I've, like I said, I've not, we've not seen many, uh, I've not seen any, any interviews with you, really, or not, not at length, anyway, and, and I'm really glad that, that we I spoke don't think to you. I, I think you might be a first, Chris, I think. Really? So, certainly in this a scoop. <laughs> cer certainly in this modern age. I mean, I yeah. have done ones, like magazine ones in the past, you know, yeah. a thousand years ago. Yeah. But cer certainly not. Yeah. Not. Uh, yeah. for, for like YouTube or anything like that. Yeah, no, brilliant. Well, I hope that people got something out. I got, I got loads out if you're listening. Um, check out in the description below. You'll find uh, links to uh, all of Kevin's books he spoke about and some of the games that he's been involved in and his website. If you've not seen any of this yet, click the links, check them out. Um, you'll find out more about what Kevin's about and, and you can buy stuff as well. Click some, put some Amazon links down there and you can go on his painting gallery and look at some of the stuff that he's been talking about over the last hour and a half or so but for now thanks very much kevin and we'll see you all next time for another master's interview thank you very much chris